Hi YouTube, just going to look up doing another shed update. I haven't done for one for quite a while. Uh, a lot of bits and pieces have happened since last time I've done a shed update video. Um, like my Wolseley WD8 on front of me. I took that to the valley this weekend, I've sold him. So um, mate, I'm just waiting for the bloke to give me the rest of the money for him and then he can have the engine now. Engine been absolutely good as gold all weekend, it fired up, it's been running nice. He runs quite fast for WD8 but it, no problems, he don't overheat or nothing, he runs sweet as a nut. Uh, the day before I took it to the show, he was running alright and then when I took him up there he was running, well when he ran here the day before I took it, he was running fully choke open. When I took him to the show he had to stay fully shut and he was only just supposed to keep going now. So I took the fuel line off and he was chuck a block of rubbish and dirt and everything. I don't think I can remember cleaning the line out. That was one thing I must have forgot when I redone the engine. Once we cleaned the line out and put it back on, put the fuel back down for it, engine fired up and we've been at good as gold for the two days of rolling for the valley. So I'm pleased with that one. International LA at the same time as the other engine broke down. Normally when one breaks down, the other one breaks down. While I was doing the fuel line on the WD8, the international side to stop, I thought oh, it could be fuel. No, all the points got all a bit crapped up, so we cleaned them all out. And then again, that engine ran up all weekend nice. Um, front of us is the Full and Johnson NC. Um, I took it to the Lords and Steam Engine Rally, and it ran nice on the Friday, the day when the public don't come there. It was running sweet as a nut all afternoon. I shut them off all right. Next day on Saturday, he would not start until we had hell of problems getting going. Eventually, we got going. The lead of the condenser came off the mag inside. So we temporarily like screwed it back in together with a solder joint broke, see? Then the engine ran all fine again all weekend and everything. So that fix was temporarily. So when I came home, I took that back out again and I um, crimped a little ring bit on it and undone the bolt and hooked them on instead of putting heat into the mag because I don't want to mess up the coils or the condenser or the heat of the solar line. Done all that, then took it down to the Royal Cornwall show. Um, it sat up there all week under the cover, I went to go up the Wednesday afternoon just to check if it was right. The engine would not start. She started a bit and then she cut out. It was getting fuel, it was, the fuel was pouring up behind the bore. The plug was sparking nice but it wasn't getting wet the plug. So we quickly put that one in the back of the van and then came home and rescued the list of D in the corner and took that down to the Royal Cornwall show and that behaved all weekend. But since the Fulham Johnson's been back, I haven't had a go starting it or nothing because when I brought them back, uh, my mate said, should we try starting it now? I said, well, I don't want to go starting it because no, my luck, it will start dragging it all the way back home. It will start right up and I'll be even more annoyed then. So I thought best thing is leave it. So when I got back, I haven't tried them yet, so I will try them one afternoon. I think the mag got a bit damp, could have been, I don't know. So that's a little thing what to look up on the side line. Climax number one pump, we took up to the show every week on the, the Tractor Club. He ran absolutely fine, he's got a couple of leaks on the back end where a frost damage crack has been repaired in the past. But I won't be worried about it because he ain't losing his pressure too much, he still pumps nice. The Tangy pump in the corner has been absolutely fine. Uh, the Petra one one um, free horse that's only been out once this year to a rally. Well, the Leo pump is all done up uh, on its board. You might probably have seen the video. Just cut a piece of the wood to sides. I just found that uh, one of the shows someone left them behind. I picked them up and took them home. Uh, quickly stained it, uh, sand it back a bit, and then burn it with the blow lamp. Just get a bit of age to it then rub some clean oil onto the wood so that's the Leo pump, he's got a few leaks on the pipelines need to sort out but the pump works quite well the Wolsey WD2, that's been alright recently that after slipping the valves the other day again I keep tightening them up, the valves that the valves were so tight I don't know how they moved because we had other problems getting the, um, the nuts to come loose on the valves to adjust them again so I don't know why he keeps doing that but in the winter I'm hoping to strip that engine down again and paint it in a better paint because that paint keeps bobbling off it uh, the fuel keeps peeling it off so I'm not really happy with the paint on it and I'm going to do them up again in winter um, 
I also sold my Lee, Lee, Lee pump, I think it's called, Lee Howell pump, I sold, that one's gone, I sold that weekend. Uh, the Lister H1 pump, I've sold that one. Um, at the moment I've got a 5 horse uh, Petter M on eBay for sale. And a Green and Carter water pump on eBay for sale. I've also got uh, a Gould's pump for the brass ball to sell that one. He works fine as well, so that will be going on eBay in the next few weeks. I don't want to put too much on eBay in one go. I'll just do a couple at a time so I can keep on track what I'm doing off. Um, so that's what I'm hoping to do, sell some bits off really. Um, I've got a domestic pump here. I want to sell it, really. I've got both. Uh, bits and I've stripped it all down both of them for the good parts or each one some had the rubbish parts other ones had good parts so you easily make a good pump out of these two you've got all the ram the leather cups are really perfect on it nothing wrong with those cups the bearings are right in them got all these plates your nuts and bolts valve case thing no none of it's got frost damage either so he's all right um, even the bung unscrews on the end that's here in the bucket here yeah, that's that. We've got him out. Uh, so that one I'll probably look up selling. I might put him in a crate and take him to one of the shows to sell soon. Um, so I think that's really it. Oh, I've got a few petrol cans I've taken to one of the valleys in a week or so time to sell off. Just want to get rid of some bits. I want to, uh, my aim is to get rid of a few engines and then I want to get another open crank again. I want to get a, um, Ideally, I'm looking for a um, Fairbanks Morse uh, Z3 horsepower, petrol power thing. Quite a big S engine, but it's not too big, if you know what I mean. So I'm hoping to get one of them for the replacement of what I'm selling. I'm keeping the Fuller & Johnson. I'm keeping the Wolseley. I'm keeping the Amanka pump. The Lister D I might sell at some point, and the pump. There's nothing absolutely wrong with that engine at all. It's probably the most reliable engine out of the whole collection. Of. Um, Fantastic starter engine that was. Well, it is now to anyone that's, that's going to start the hobby in the valley. It's a lovely engine to start with. Um, International LA, I might get rid of that at some point. He's been alright, but I, like I said, I want to save some money up and get another bigger engine. So we should look at doing that, hopefully. So, um, thank you for watching my video, YouTube, and I shall see you again on another video. Thank you. Bye.